Welcome, folks. We are here with the 2019 Open Division State Champion Coach, Rick Garretson from Chandler High School. How are you doing, Coach? And welcome to the show. I'm doing great. Thank you for uh, having me on board. Yeah, definitely. Excited to talk some Arizona football. Uh, Coach Eddie Zuby, who works Arizona for our company and also runs quite a successful program himself at Higley High School, introduced us uh, for our Chalk Talk series. And I was telling you beforehand, my only football experience in the state of Arizona was a 108 degree kickoff at ASU my senior year where we stretched in the locker room and went straight into indie drills to start because it was so dang hot. So first question, how do you play football in that heat every day, man? <laughs> well, it's, you know, it, it, it's not easy. And I, like we talked before, uh, you can't be soft and play high school football in, uh, in the state of Arizona. You know, we at Chandler, uh, we've got great facilities, but we, we still practice at four o'clock in the afternoon. So there's going to be days where it's going to be somewhere between, you know, 110 and 116, but we'll still go ahead and we'll modify the practice a little bit, you know, maybe stay out there a little bit longer because we're going to have longer breaks, you know, under the trees in, in our facility. And, and our, our staff does a great job, our medical staff, of keeping the kids watered down. So, you know, my 10 years there, we knock on wood, we've never had an issue with, you know, somebody being dehydrated. And it's a, you know, it's a, it's a big advantage for, you know, when a, when a school comes from uh, out of state, to play in Arizona. I know when IMG came here in 217, yeah, it mm -hmm. took its toll and it took its toll pretty early, you know? And yeah. We're just, uh, I'm not saying we're used to it, but we just adapt to it and uh, ultimately, uh, you know, have, uh, you know have, have the days that we have to go ahead and progress it out and make sure that uh, we keep things in order there for, for everybody's safety. Yeah. You talked about IMG. You guys are kind of in this class of high school football where you're perennially a top 10 program in the entire country um, with the IMGs and the St. John Boscos and the De La Salle's and the North Shores and Duncanvilles of the world. Um, I was reading on Max Preps this week that you guys have the sixth most active players in the NFL out of any high school in the country. So um, when you kind of look at that success, you, you think of your journey and getting to Chandler. If we go back to the beginning, when did you want to know that when did you really know that you wanted to be a football coach? Well, I, you know, after I, I, I went to school at Servite and, and played ball there, I went to San Diego State in a football scholarship, uh, got done with that in, in 1978, and then uh, didn't really want to get back into the game in any, in any form. Uh, and then in 1980, I was an opportunity to coach at Westminster High School with Miles Corgan, who was a, uh, a former coach of mine at Servite. And uh, they were in the Sunset League at that time, which was a Division I league in, in the 80s. And did that for one year and then moved to uh, Arizona, opened up some athletic shoe stores, uh, had those for about uh, six, seven years. And my brother decided he wanted to go see if he could be an NBA referee, which he, he, he did. And he actually, he just retired wow. for 32 years of it, my brother Ron. Wow. So, you know, uh, then I went, moved back to California. And then Larry Toner got the job at Servite. And uh, he asked me to come on board with his staff. And the next thing I know, I went back and got my history degree at Cal State Fullerton, became the dean of students, survived for eight years, and then taught for eight years. And, uh, you know, that was my beginning of my journey of the football world. Um, so I know you got the Ohana T-shirt. We have some Hawaiian flavor and team spawn as well. Uh, it's a part of your – what does – that mean to your program and Ohana is, Ohana. is uh, family Hawaiian and Makoa is uh, no fear. Uh, Sean Iguano, who was the head coach here from 211 to uh, to, to last year, uh, the went to ASU in 2019. Uh, that was what he formulated and his motto and what we uh, what the program lived by and how the program grew up. And so when I came on as a uh, first year head coach, needless to say, I'm going to go ahead and keep that tradition in place and that you know it's about doing the right thing all the time with the kids and the, and the coaches and the staff uh, on the field off the field have an environment of competition you know we uh we have an active competitive football program which uh you know kind of like college you know someone's always over your shoulder waiting to take your job right and looking uh heaven forbid you go you get hurt and, and you're out of there now and it's been hard to get back on the field so it's uh it's worked uh, since 2011, 
And like anything, uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep that tradition going. And it's a, it's a very important part of not only our football program, but of Chandler High School as well. Yeah, definitely. What was that transition like, a program that's been good for, for so many years to have those expectations and, and deliver? Uh, what was your first season as, as the head man there like? Well, you know, it's like, it's like anything. We, we wanted to keep the staff together. When, and Sean's hire at ASU happened in days. And the next thing you know, he's gone, no head coach. What's going to happen to the program? We've got a bunch of guys that have been around there back, you know, for since the 19, uh, to 1990s. And um, we're there when there was 25 guys on the team, you know, and not doing so well and pretty much getting beat up by everybody to, to the point of what we were doing now. And so we all stayed together. And it's, it's basically the same guys that were making all the calls and putting together all the scripts, putting together all the, the practice plans and everything else. It's the same group of people. Um, you know, Sean, I handled the offense uh, my way in 2016. And from 2016, if, if you study a Chandler offense, um, we're pretty high, high profile in, in the country with uh, the yards we have. Now we got really good players too, don't get me wrong. And you know, that's how you're able to, to get those type of things done. So it all just kind of stayed status quo. Um, didn't change much of anything. Of course, I put my own flavor, my own spin into certain areas, but uh, just took that to another level and ended up going undefeated for the first time in Chandler football history and, and went in the Super 8, which was the first year of a uh, – it, it didn't matter how big your school is. The eight top teams in Arizona yep. played for the uh, Super 8 championship, and we were fortunate enough to go ahead and, and win it. Yeah, California introduced the open division a few years back, but I know that it was pretty big time of y'all to be able to win the first ever open division champion for the state of Arizona. You talked about your flavor. What does that consist of? What uh, uh, salt did I, you season the meal well, with? Well, I've, I've got I've got that that servite edge. Okay, I played there. I coached. I was there for 16 years. I was a dean of students. You know, anybody that's been in an all boys school know that's a a pretty high profile position. Sometimes maybe you don't want to be in, but uh, you know, and, and when Sean hired me uh, on board uh, in 2010, um, he wanted me to bring some of those aspects from, uh, from Servite and the Trinity league and back in the Angeles league, right. Uh, to, uh, to Chandler. And, and I did. So, uh, you know, as time has gone along, you know, we go ahead and like I said, we've changed a few things, but not anything I would say real noticeable but wanted to make sure that I've got creative coaches, guys that think out of the box, players that aren't afraid to work and aren't afraid to compete. And then it's just a, you know, a recipe of putting everything together and, and it works out, uh, it works out really well. But, you know, if you're asking me what kind of a coach I am, I look at myself as a player's coach, uh, a straight shooter with the kids. Uh, they know, uh, they know right from wrong. They know consequences. Uh, they know what's expected from them in, in the course of, of the season and in the off season. And it's, uh, you know, like I said, it's been a recipe for a lot of success uh, the last last six years. Yeah. Servites, like you're saying, I, I remember attending a De La Salle Servite game at Orange Coast College down down in L.A. a couple of years back. And they start with the, what is it called? Like the structured, it's almost the like military. The, the, yeah. the hundred. That's a big yeah. deal. Yeah. It is a big deal. And there's like, you know, the bagpipes come out. It's like quite an experience. Well, the, 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 uh, bagpipe, the bagpipes were Troy's deal. That's, oh, okay. that, 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 that's not, that Post wasn't free. That's his, yeah, that's his uh, spin on things, uh, which is great. I, I, I like the bagpipes, but the hut drill has been around since the 60s. So, you know, back to your question about, you know, Makoa and Ohana, you know, let's say uh, you, somebody comes in and doesn't want to do that. That'd be like, taking away the hut drill. That would not be a yeah. solid decision, you know, in, in, yeah. in, that, in that respect. But uh, yeah, the hut drill is something that's a precision drill that was, uh, that was made back in the 60s and uh, survived performs it before and, and after uh, every, uh, every game they play. Yeah. So a lot of stories, and I think it's fascinating to, I love just asking people like, hey, how did you get to where you are? A lot of stories go like, hey, I was a, co a coach, then I became an AD, or maybe then I went into a dean role or something like that. Yours has kind of flipped, at least with a lot of them that I've heard. How has the dean of students, you alluded to it a little bit, helped shape you as a coach, that experience for so long well, at Survive? That's a great question. Um, as a coach, you're a problem solver. 
And when I was dean of students, you solve problems every single day. And yeah. it could be uh, have life effects, you know, on, you know, altering effects on, on kids and families. So it was an important position. Being, you know, a football coach as well had its benefits, you know, because the kids knew me from that side of the fence as well. I didn't go to Servite to be a dean of students. Um, I just happened to be there for eight years until a history job opened up and then it finally opened up. And then I got, uh, I got out of that and into the history side of things. But, you know, it, same thing, it formulated who I am as far as the structure of uh, my discipline, um, my work ethic. Uh, you know, I coached with Larry Toner, who's an icon. At, uh, it's the same with Coach Le uh, would be at uh, Dale Sal. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I was fortunate to, to hang with him for basically 15, 16 years. And uh, it, it set that foundation for me. So eventually, if I became a head coach, uh, that I would use all those things that I learned from him. And speaking of being a head coach, I, I had no idea. I, I really didn't have any drive. I mean, I'm 63 years old. And uh, it wasn't like I need to be the head coach. I just know when it came my way, there was people that wanted me to, you know, to, to put my hat in for it, that uh, I would do anything to keep the program together, keep that staff together, and keep those kids going in a positive direction. Yeah, that's so cool. So first time head coach at the age 62, 63? Yes, sir. Dude, that's awesome. And you go undefeated and win the state championship in the first year. Gosh, man, that's a cool story. Um, <laughs> last one before we get to the two-minute drill. Uh, what motivates you as a coach? What makes you tick? What's your purpose? Well, the purpose is to, is, is to develop young men into future leaders and uh, – and, and, and productive citizens. Uh, we have a great leadership program that Russell Scott, our defensive backfield coach, puts together. We have an off-season leadership. We have an in-season leadership. I learned a lot about uh, leadership at Servite, you know, because that's a big part of their program as well. So being able to direct uh, the young men, uh, it's not all about football. Football is just a piece of it. You know, we want well-rounded uh, individuals. And, um, you know, football doesn't define who they are, just a part of who they are. And then ultimately when they go on and, you know, into their lives, uh, they're, they're great fathers and, you know, and husbands. And it's, uh, it's a real good uh, positive situation. So, you know, I, that's really what drives me. It's not necessarily the X's and O's. I mean, they're nice. You know, it's, it's yeah. a nice product to, to end up having that. But, uh, and, you know, football's fun. I mean, it's the only way, it's the only sport that you can really, once you stop playing, if you want to kind of keep your hand in it, coaching is really the only way, in my opinion, yeah. to, to keep your hand back in it because you're not going out and playing, you know, five on five football. I mean, I'm talking the real game, not, not you know, yeah. flag and stuff like that or seven on. But yeah. uh, it's, um, it, it's exciting. It, it keeps you young because you're around young people all the time, you know. And uh, it's just uh, – and I, I've got a great wife. You know, you have to have that, 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 that rock at home you know, to allow you to do what you want to do because, you know, there's a lot of time and a lot of uh, hours, you know, that are put into things that, uh, that sometimes you're not around the family. And uh, I've been fortunate to have a, a, my Wendy's an unbelievable wife. That's awesome. That's cool. Um, well, I want to, I did want to talk to you about the recruiting process, but we can do that after, after our chalk talk portion, move okay. into the two minute drill, uh, rapid fire. Give us the first thing that comes to your mind. What was the last book you read? I don't read many books, man. I, I do most of my stuff online. I'll go and find things to watch and videos. I'm a, I'm a visual learner. It's just, you know, finding the time. It's kind of like, you know, when's the last time you went and golf? I love the golf, but I just, I just don't have the yeah. time for it. But uh, usually through the video side of things, of, of getting uh, inspirational talks and, and, and learning new things and new techniques in, in the football world and, uh, and leadership. You know, leadership yeah. is a huge thing in, in our program. And like I said, Russ is the one that, uh, that develops that. But just, uh, you know, learning like I did today about Paradise High School on E360, that their, their football field, you know, got burning down. And, you know, it just yeah. stories that we can pass on and help our kids, you know, in times of uh, need. And you watch a story like that, and now the pandemic, while it's, you know, has its effects, that was like even, uh, I, don't, I don't know how you deal with that. And the coach yeah. Prince there did an unbelievable job of that with those boys. And it's, uh, you know, just trying to get those aspirations and, and, and move things to, you know, we can pass along to our kids as well. Yeah. Yeah. That story's just up North from us because we've been affected by those fires so much too. So I follow that one closely and it's cool that ESPN did that. Uh, what have you done that I should do? 
Um, you know, in, in football, you're talking about football, anything, just an experience that I, that I, that you've had that I should do. Uh, you know, um, I don't know, go to Lake Havasu sometime. It's a lot of fun. Get out on the lake, you know, ha ha hopefully someone's got a boat with you and, uh, kick back and, and have a great old time. I, my folks, uh, my, my in-laws have a house there that we are able to get away and it's just a good getaway. It's a little bit warm in the summertime, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun. We have a good time cool. there. That, that, that would be kind of like the closest hobby. How's that? Okay. That's yeah. What is that like an hour or two from y'all? Yeah. About uh, a okay. little more than that. Probably about three, about three hours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Favorite position on the football field and why? Quarterback. You know, quarterback. I didn't play, I didn't, I didn't play quarterback. I've had great quarterbacks uh, in, in my time, you know, with Servite and, and Greg Cicero that went to Texas and Baylor, Josh Nelson that went to, that played at um, Ole Miss. And of course, my guys at Chandler, you know, Brett Huntley, who I came in in 210. I didn't really know Brett. I didn't really train Brett. But after Brett, I did. I had my son, Daryl. Um, obviously, Brett went to UCLA in the NFL. Daryl went to Utah State and Oregon State. Then I had Bryce Perkins, who just signed as a free agent with the Rams. I've uh, got, uh, uh, Mason Moran, who went to Oregon State, and then I've got Jacob Conover, who was a three-year starter uh, and won three consecutive state championships. And uh, then I got Mikey Keene, who's the first quarterback to go undefeated. He's got about, I don't know, about 16, 17 offers right now. So yeah, there's, there's it's a no decent position. list. Eh, what, decent. What's that? It's yeah, a decent there, list, there, you know. There, there's, there's no <laughs> position like it in sports. Yeah. Uh, it gets way too much credit. It gets way too much blame. Um, you know, apparently now Aaron Rodgers isn't that good. I heard that this morning, you know, on, on, on TV. So it's uh, it's so unique, though. But I, I love developing quarterbacks. Um, my quarterbacks are in charge of everything: the communication, the calls, the protections. Uh, obviously, open and close field reason the passing game. They they run the show, and and people know that. If you want to come and and compete at the quarterback position at Chandler, that's what's going to be uh, waiting for you. And then if you're fortunate enough, like all of my guys have been so far, when they go to college, when they're all thrown into the fire sooner than later, and all of them have been, right, uh, they do really well, you know. So yeah. it's, uh, it's just a unique position. I love studying it, and, and I love, you know, changing with it. I mean, throwing a football is throwing a football mechanically, but um, there are so many different uh, variations of, of how to get the job done. And uh, it's just, uh, I'd say that would be my favorite position. Yeah. It is unique. Our first guest was the OC at UC Davis, who was there when I was a player. And he talked a lot about quarterback play, too. And they actually, their quarterback just signed with the Calgary Stampede, uh, who played at Davis last year. So we'll see how he does in the CFL. But there's something special about it, for sure. I, I don't, I, I was never a quarterback, but you always look at a quarterback, they're just different. And, uh, so that's that's quite I, a, quite a list as well. <laughs> I, I've been I've been fortunate enough to experience it as a parent and as a coach. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's the <laughs> as a parent, it's like it's a rough world. It's a yeah. rough world, you know. You hear? Uh, the, yeah. It, it, it's Were a you love on the hate. sidelines? It's a, it, it's a love hate. You weren't hate in the stands, world. right? Yeah. You were on the sidelines. Yeah. I, well, I was in the sidelines when my son was at Chandler. Yeah, but obviously, you know, you're yeah. the dad. You know, when he's in yeah. college and, and uh, it's just, it's a love hate relationship. You know, you, you want to uh, ultimately the kids to do well and want their team to do well. And, and you don't want them to get hurt, you know, because the quarterback is a dangerous position. Most people don't look at it like that, but you're very vulnerable in a lot of different areas, you know, to basically get knocked out, you know, yeah. and um, it's, uh, there's nothing like it. You know, and, I, and I've uh, really enjoyed it. And, and see how it's developed over the time. And, and the one thing about our quarterbacks, our quarterbacks know how to throw strikes. Because if you can't throw strikes, you can't play the position. If you can't think, you can't play the position. If you can't throw, you can't play it. And if you can't lead, you can't play it. So it uh, has everything, and it's diversified, and I, and I really like that. Hmm. I like those three things. Best sporting event you've ever been to? Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I went to the um, – I guess it would be the 1979 Super Bowl with the Rams and the Steelers when tickets were $30. I, 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 had, I had a buddy of mine that played with the Rams uh, and I enjoyed watching him. Actually, Ronnie's caught a touchdown that, that day. And, and that's when obviously the, uh, the, the steel curtain in the heyday, you know, of, 
of the Steelers, right? And I sat next to Connie Chung, who was like a big time uh, broadcaster at that time with like CBS News, right? And she's asked me questions the whole game, <laughs> she's done a bunch of stuff, but it was really cool. And then I've been to a lot of different, you know, my, my dad refereed, my dad's in the, in the Basketball Hall of Fame and as a referee. And in his time of being the Dean of Student, or excuse me, the uh, Chief of Staff and refereeing in the NBA, uh, I've been to just, I'm watching the Jordan thing going, oh, I was at that game, I was at that game, I was at that game. I was See. That game. So, so those are all pretty cool things, but the Super Bowl was, was definitely unique with the $30 ticket. And, uh, and I couldn't find anybody to go with me. That was the other side thing. It was like, <laughs> I'm not saying it wasn't a big deal back then, but it's just a little bit, a little bit different. But it was the first, uh, uh, it might be the only Super Bowl that was in the Rose Bowl with uh, the Steelers and, and the Rams. And it was a big deal with the Rams being in at that time. Yeah. Wow. A uh, person who's made the biggest impact on your life and why? My dad. My dad. Um, you know, being the leader of, of NBA referees from 1981 to 1998 is a big, that's a big job. And, and obviously being promoted into the, to the Basketball Hall of Fame in 216 with Yao Ming and Shaq and Iverson, that, that, was, a pretty, that was a pretty big deal. Uh, the way the game's refereed today, um, and the three-man mechanics, those, that, that's all him. So watching him as a leader, as a motivator, as a developer, thinking out of the box, you know, how to critique all these different aspects that he did all that time in the NBA. Um, I was able to go ahead and, you know, just absorb all of that and really, uh, you know, work it into how I handle things, uh, you know, in, with my business in, in the football world. Yeah. My wife even mentioned from watching The Last Dance, she said, it's so much more physical. <laughs> the game is oh. so much more physical oh. back then. Because we, we live in the Bay Area, and I got, I got my Steph Curry paraphernalia on the wall, and she's like, man, they were just hitting people back then. So they, they were, your dad probably yeah. had a lot to do with figuring out, hey, we're not going to allow that. <laughs> well, you know what? That, remember, that in, in the 70s and the early 80s, the NBA finals would come on delayed tape at 1030 at night. They weren't live. So, you know, and when, and when David Stern came in, he changed all that changed that whole way that things were looked at. And then of course they had magic and bird, you know, come along and, and things just changed, you know, but yeah, it was physical. There's, there's no, yeah. uh, there's m much more so than today. And, you know, like you say, each generation, uh, I can remember when th there was no Europeans in the NBA. Well, there's yeah. a lot of them now, right? There's a yeah. lot of them now and, and they've changed the way the game has been played as, you know, as well with the three point shot and all that. But yeah, if you went to the whole, you know, there's a reason they made the Jordan rules, right? <laughs> everybody's, Jeez, kinda, man. everybody's kinda seeing that now. So yeah. It's, uh, it, it's interesting. Well, fascinating stuff, man. Thanks for sharing that. Uh well it's it's chalk talk time. So maybe you can break down some quarterback play for us or uh show us some of your Chandler secrets, but feel free to share your screen now. Okay. So you talk about a play this is a scheme uh, we call this Falcon. Um, it, it's a scheme we love to run against, you know, people that are going to play open yeah. field. You know, we, yeah, we cover two, cover four, but, you know, our, our schematics are really, are we open or are we closed? And we will have, you know, open field reads. We will have closed field reads within the same scheme. So the quarterback needs to go ahead and be locked in on that. And uh, obviously if people want to roll once the ball snapped into a showing open and rolling closed or showing closed and rolling open, he's going to know where to, to go ahead and, uh, and head to. I actually stole this from, um, to, I'm, I'm the best of Steelers in the world. <laughs> Steelers meaning S-T-E-A-L-E-R-E-R-S, -E -E right? And uh, uh, I got this from the Atlanta Falcons. So the NFL is a little bit different because the game is played more in the middle of the field than it is from, um, you know, a hash mark. But this is generally a boundary play. And actually the first one we have here against Liberty last year were more in the middle of the field. But all, all, all we're going to do is we're going to take we're going to take uh, this receiver right here and, and run him on a, on a post. We're going to take this receiver right here and run him on a, on a narrow and sit. We're going to take this receiver right here and run him since we're a little in the middle of the field, probably towards the top of the numbers. We're going to sit this man back over here and we're going to run a a 12 yard post back over here. So you know, depending on what they're in is depending on where the quarterback's going to see. But it's been a real effective play for us, a big play for us, and and a, a play to really uh, move the, uh, you know, move the change. So let me just go ahead and pop this up into a bigger picture. Can you see that? Mm-hmm. Well, good. All right. 
So we're coming out here now. See, this is why this is why good players make you good coach, man. See this guy right here. This guy's a, a sophomore. <laughs> hadn't played a game of varsity yet, and he already has offers to Oregon and everything because he runs a he he won the hundred meters in 10-4 as a freshman. That's Jeez like the ninth amazing. fastest, you know. So this is this is Karan's first play of of his ability to make a play right in, in his high school career, which doesn't go too well for him. But you see how we're coming out here, working, we get a nice little mesh. And now we have this safe, want to read all the safety. Usually most safeties, when they see this guy coming here, they're going to go ahead and, and, and go with them. And if they don't, this is what happens. And now we get a wide open bus of coverage and Karan ends up not, uh, not coming down with it, but uh, <laughs> it's uh it, it, it's a, you know, it's a scheme. It's, it's a five man protection scheme. So you have to be comfortable with hot reads. You know, we'll send the protection, generally protecting the quarterback's backside. And we could read hot off of this. We could be hot off of this man coming back over here as well. So it's a, uh, it's a simple scheme, but it's, it's effective, even though we don't, even though we don't hit that one, we don't hit that one right there. So this is uh same thing coming on back. Now this is when we generally run it on a hash mark, again, a boundary. So this receiver back out over here, if everybody wants to be pushed to the boundary, we're going to play a one-on-one -on -one game with this guy back over here. Uh, a few years back, we had a uh, team, Red Mountain, and they, they, wanted, they weren't going to let us do certain things into the boundary and their overload and leaving this guy out here by himself. And I had a really good player here. And after his fifth touchdown, you know, they, I think they finally kind of got the message that, uh, you know, we could go ahead and attack other places because we want to, we want to attack the field. Um, everything's predicated on, you know, alignment. You know, he's in tight, one by one over here, two steps outside the hash mark over here. He's about five yards back over here and working the way back on, back on through. So we got the same thing, working our mesh points, working back over here. And what I'd really like the quarterback to do, you can see how this running back is going to pop open. This guy comes in on him a little bit, probably why he's got to get, got to get rid of the ball. But we have that check down coming here. And, you know, the thing about quarterbacks, you can't be afraid to check the ball down. I, I remember Tom Brady, I think, in his first Super Bowl, pretty sure he had a bunch of check downs except one play to win his first Super Bowl. So, you know, you always got to be, you always got to be uh, confident. And we always tell the quarterbacks to take what they, take what they give you. you no, know, don't try to force things. If you force things, that's usually when, when you have some, uh, when you have some trouble. So here we come on in here. Get this right here, and we end up getting a nice, what, 13, 14-yard uh, gain there. We're lucky to have everything from the end zone as well, so we can teach our kids, right, uh, what's happening with, obviously, we got open field here, what's going on. Obviously, that safety is not going to let uh, let that post go anymore, keep people dropping back over here, and that's a that's a pretty big hole there, you know, for, uh, for him. And that, that's the beauty of end zone. And when we film ourselves in practice, you know, we do use a drone, uh, you know, and we call it drone vision. And so we get these views in practice as well, which is great for the quarterbacks because they really mm -hmm. see truly what they see in, in, uh, in ball games. Coming back over here again on the right hash mark, open field, working back over here. Again, Mikey got our quarterback got a little bit of a little pressure come on him. So almost read this is a hot read. You can tell obviously this, this man coming down here is open as well. And ends up not not pulling that one on in. Let's see here. Let's go. You know the nice thing about this stuff is you can go ahead and and change and change things up. So we're a little more stacked here with this this look right here, which tends to give defense a little bit of trouble. Again, that that pose they they bust. As as Jalen's coming here, coming to the to the high to the high eight, and Mikey gets pressure. If Mikey doesn't get pressure, he's going to throw that in time, and that will be a ninety what uh, six yard seven yard <laughs> touchdown. Okay, but having a, a mobile quarterback, what it does works itself back out over here and and makes it uh, he ends up making a making a nice making a nice play. Again, when you see it from the end zone, it's a, it's a great teaching tool. You know, obviously having the intercut is, is huge for us for developing offense. I mean, since 2016, we've had a couple of years where we run for 4,000 and we throw for 4,000. And, uh, you know, usually we're, usually we're in the top 15 in the nation 
um, you know, in total offense and max prep. So that's pretty good, you know, for, for what we're trying to, trying, to get, uh, trying to get done. So if we're looking here, now, now the quarterback on a pre-snap read, see how this guy's really dropped down? He, he's, he's looking at that going, if, that, if he doesn't move, he's in trouble. And he goes with the running back for, or with, I'm sorry, with our, uh, with our H back out, uh, out, out wide here. And again, that, that should just be three-step drop, stepping on up and, and bombs away, bombs away touchdown. But he does a nice job and works it back. And our receiver does a nice job of, again, going to the open, open spot and working back outside and, and making, a, you know, making, a big, uh, making a big play. Was that at Moore Park College or high school? It is high yeah. school. Who are, you, who are you guys playing? Yeah, we happen playing Moore to Park? go the day. We happen to go the. We're playing uh, Capital Christian High School in Sacramento. Yeah. Okay. We got away from them a little bit early. They they had good athletes, but they didn't have a bunch of them. And I got a bunch yeah. of guys, and we run a tempo offense, so it was. And it happened to be ninety five degrees on on uh, on field turf that night as well. So it's uh. It's a little, it was a little tough day for them. Is that Casey they, Taylor? They, uh, was he it there? Was, it, it is. Casey Taylor is awesome. Oh yeah. I met him up in, uh, uh, up in my, uh, the Under Armour uh, get together last year, and he, he's a, he's a he's a great guy. Um, yeah. We can run this out of, out of different things here to now we're in wing with uh, you know with this uh, with this uh, Falcon scheme and it's uh, just a good. Solid, solid uh, play. That's one of our. My internet is unstable. Okay, <laughs> so my internet just trashed on me. But uh, right. we we like uh, yeah we like to like I said we're a tempo team and we we press the issue and I I had four Division One running backs last year so you know it's we can run the ball we can throw the ball we have got a really good offensive line really good coach and um, we're tough to defend. You know, really yeah. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking, we were talking about just, you got to have players. It's obviously a combination of, of coaching and the structure that you put in place as kind of the leaders of the team. But then the reality of all these guys you're talking about, Hey, this guy's got offers here. All these quarterbacks went on to play here, here, and here. Uh, we talked about all of the players that are in the NFL now. And then just recently you guys have had tons of kids receive offers and that pipeline at Chandler is strong. Um, what's the recruiting process like these days from your vantage point, um, especially with everything that's been going on with the pandemic well, that hit earlier this year? In, in the pandemic era, I don't think we've had ever this many. I mean, our kids get a lot of offers over the time. Don't get me wrong. But for a group, it's never been this much. I mean, we're, we're honing in on, since this has all been gone down a hundred and that's from Pac-12, Big 12, you know, FCS, D2, D3, because everybody not going to USC. Okay. And um, it's, I think what's happened is it's allowed coaches to really spend time because they have time to watch film. You know, just in the time you and I've been talking, I've gotten three phone calls from, from different coaches here, you know, uh, one to talk about whatever they want to talk about. Right. So I think it's helped our kids out of maybe the people that get uh, overlooked or a little bit under the radar. And uh, it's just been a, a big positive. And, and of course, they can't get eyes on somebody in the spring. And there's a couple of guys I think that that might have hurt, you know, because uh, they really want to size kids up. I'm, I'm not a guy. I don't have a staff that, that exaggerates on measurables. I, when, a, when a college coach meets one of our kids, I want them to have the idea, oh, He's bigger than what I thought. Not like, you know, oh, he said he's six foot, but he's five nine. Okay. Yeah. So we're very particular about that. My coaching staff is involved in, in, in this as well. I mean, um, and it doesn't matter where it comes from. You know, uh, we got a couple of guys with recruiting services, you know, that helped them out. Uh, Brandon Buckner's dad is Brenton Buckner, you know, with the, with the Cardinals, uh, who was with the Raiders last year, right? I mean, obviously, you know, his, I mean, it's just, it's just a group of things. And ultimately we tell the kids, your film is your resume and your film tells you and tells someone who you are, not the seven on stuff, not, not, not the camp, you know, who you are is what you're doing in that game, in that film. And our kids have a, have a lot of uh, success with that. And, you know, we're fortunate to have huddle, 
So everybody's got a highlight film. Um, I'm not saying we can't make everybody look good in the highlight film for the most part. You can find things, but you, you, you want to find things that people are looking for. You know, if you're an offensive yeah. lineman, you're looking for certain things and it just can't be, you're making the same play every play. Uh, same yeah. whether it's quarterback, whether it's a receiver, you know, uh, whether it's a D lineman or an O lineman. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's been good, you know, for us. Uh, the main thing is everybody's just kind of anxious to get, you know, back into the, I guess you can call it the grind, right? Because, you know, we always say the, the off season develops champions. That, yeah. you, you win championships in the off season, and I've got a, we'll get in a two and a half, new two and a half million dollar uh, weight weight training facility that'll be open in June. So we're really excited about that. So we were training in a tent, in a four thousand square foot tent, but we got things done, and our numbers were good. You know, before we broke for, uh, you know, for the spring break, is I haven't seen the kids in eight weeks, two yeah. months. You know, because we went spring break. And then things got shut down, right? So, but we keep in touch with them, you know, through through the Google Classroom meets uh, uh, in the operation, and it's uh, we go two times a week, and it's like we're trying to set the format that it's just like uh, uh, if we were at school in the classroom with your coaches, you're in the room with skill, you're in the room with the offensive line and their staff at the defense, you know, you're in your room with you know, linebackers and D-line and the safeties and DB. I mean, so we're trying to keep things as uh, you know, as appropriate there as we can. I, I don't really worry about my kids if they're lifting and stuff. We, we do have, you know, program for, uh, you know, lifting. If, if they have weights, we have a program. If they don't have weights and it's, uh, you know, we're just doing our best to, to get through it. And, you know, my kids are, for the most part, highly motivated. If, if they weren't, they wouldn't be at Chandler. You know, because yeah. it's not guaranteed that you're, I mean, Johnny Johnson, who's going to be a four-year starter at Oregon, was a backup his junior year behind Nikhil Harry and Chase Lucas and Kobe Taylor and, uh, you know, and, and played his way into a to a scholarship his, his senior year. So it's, uh, you know, we just have a unique situation. You talk about the McCall and Ohana, that's all part of that culture that uh, develops competition and gets the kids to, you know, to be the best they can be. Yeah. Well, it's, it's an incredible program and you have an incredible story. I can't get over first year head coach winning the state championship, going undefeated first year open division state championship game for Arizona. Appreciate you uh, chalking some quarterback play up and, and joining. And I'll let you get back to answering college coaches and, and getting back to it. I know you miss probably being out there with your kids, but it's gonna. It's coming sooner rather than later. So uh, excited Agreed. to see how y'all do. And, and thanks again for joining, Coach. All right, Brock. Anytime, man.